Oh, hello. Hey. Yeah, I didn't see you there. Um, well, I just thought I'd go ahead and boot up some Daggerfall Unity. Uh, I think today is the day that I start a new character, and I just thought I would extend the invitation um, to watch this to you all. Yeah. So my name is Micah Raygun. Um, I like to play Daggerfall a lot. I like to see how far I can get without dying, and I like to make wacky sort of suboptimal classes while I'm doing so. Um, I've made a few tweaks recently to my mod list to make things even more difficult and obtuse for myself. Um, I think most notably is the Mudex mod by Ralzar. I believe that stands for Monsters Unleveled and the Daggerfall Enemy Expansion kind of rolled up into one, so if you're unaware, uh, in the base game of Daggerfall, there is some level scaling that happens. It's not quite as heavily as what happens in Oblivion or Skyrim, but it's there. And so, like, at level 20, you're going to run into just hordes of liches and ancient vampires. Um, as well as, like, the humanoid NPCs, they scale to your level as well. So, this mod has, in addition to applying the sort of meaner monsters mod that you've seen before, if you've played this game recently... Uh, it also removes the level scaling, so I can run into Daedra Lords at level 1, I can run into Rats at level 20, and everything in between. Uh, we have random starting dungeon on, so we could just end up in a really dangerous dungeon that's not Privateer's Hold. Uh, so it, it's going to be exciting. Um, to set the expectation, I'm going to make characters that I like a lot, but they are going to die a lot, so I hope you don't get too attached to them. Without further ado, let's start a new game. We're going to get taken to this uh, race selection screen. If you're new to Daggerfall, you might be unaware that uh, Imperials and Orcs are not playable in the base game. I also like to randomize which race I select as well as their gender. Um, mostly because we don't really choose those things in real life. So if RPGs are made to mimic real life then I think they should be kind of random too. At least that's what I like about it in my playstyle. So let's go ahead and roll this bad boy. I have a separate entry for each uh, race and uh, sex combination. And uh, okay, looks like we are going to be a female Nord. All right, let's get out of here. Nord hail from the province of Skyrim. Uh, have y'all heard of Skyrim? That's where the Nords are from. Uh, you are part of a tall and fair-skinned people, strong, willful, and hardy. Owing to the climate of Skyrim, Nords are resistant to the coldest of temperatures and take little damage even from ice-based magical attacks. Okay, that's great, because there's almost no ice-based magical attacks. That's great. That's very helpful. Nords are historically well-suited to all the arts of the warrior. Is your character to be a Nord? Ah, uh, yeah. And we're going to be female about it. Um, we're going to choose from a list of classes, and we're going with something very similar to the Bard. Uh, I kind of looked at the Bard from Daggerfall, Morrowind, and Oblivion, and saw where they overlapped, and saw where there were some distinctions. And, uh, we're gonna come up with a little hybrid of it. You know, it's really fortuitous that I ended up rolling the Nord, because I was not sure what to call this class, like, Bard 2.0, or... Um, something like that. But now that I'm a Nord, I can just call it a Scald. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So we're going to make our Scald. Let's go ahead and call it that. And we're going to have some pretty poor strength. And I'm going to regret this. But let's have some poor endurance as well. Um, what else should we work on? Historically... Uh, bards have had high intelligence and personalities, so let's go ahead and do that. We're not going to be much of a caster, but we're going to use intelligence anyway. Uh, I'm tempted to drive my strength even lower, but that's... Let's just leave it as is. You know, this is kind of middling for, uh, for our purposes. I bet we can tank uh, agility and endurance and a little bit of strength, get 10 points back. So I'd really like a bit more personality to start off with. We're a bard, you know what I mean? It's like we're supposed to charm the pants off of people. All right, so we're going to choose our primary skills. They're going to be uh, mostly language skills. We've got etiquette. We're going to have streetwise. And we're going to have 
dodging because we're going to try our best to not die uh, against all odds. Uh, if you're unaware, etiquette in Streetwise will help you to pacify humanoid enemies of certain classes. So etiquette is used for things like knights and archers, whereas Streetwise is used against uh, knight blades and rogues and other such thugs. Uh, I'm trying out this mod called Language Skills Overhaul. This is my first time using it. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people say it's like the best thing since sliced bread. Others say wait for the next update to install it. But you know, if it's a buggy mess, I'll just disable it. Um, I'll talk about the differences between Language Skill Overhaul and the default game as we get to playing. But let's go ahead and go to Major Skills. Um, so in this game, bards use archery, long blades, and uh, hand to hand. But, I'm sorry, uh, they use short blade, not long blade. But I really like the Oblivion character that has the long blade. I think they use long blade in Morrowind as well, so we're gonna go with that. It's also just been a long time since I've held a good saber, you know what I mean? Uh, let's also use mercantile because we are charming and we're going to need to buy a lot of stuff. And a little bit of illusion thrown in as a major skill. Uh, part of the language skill overhaul is being able to recruit people if you roll well enough and uh, kind of have a posse roaming about you, uh, which will be nice to counteract the horrible hordes. Is that what it's called? Um, another mod by Ralzar, who created the uh, meaner monsters and Mudex mods. This one will have like more rodents, like bats and rats whenever you encounter them. Every lich you see will be surrounded by skeletons. Um, there will be hordes of monsters. It should be cool. Um, so having my own posse will help combat those, and I'm hoping that some restoration, while it's also in line with the class's um, original identity, will help me to kind of stay in the back ranks of the formation and heal up my posse. Um, so that's the idea there. What else we got? We're going to get some more language skills, such as Daedric, because uh, we're going to make something of a bibliophile and a scholar out of this scald. Um, so we want to choose some languages, not only that are beneficial to us, as Daedric will be, if I run into Daedric Lords at level 1, it would be cool just to pacify those bad boys. Um, yeah, so I also want to choose languages where it would make sense that I'm interested in the lore of them. So, uh, Daedric and Dragonish definitely fit the bill there. We're also going to choose Orcish, this is mostly out of practical reasons. Uh, especially, it's, it's very fitting that we're from um, Skyrim, at, kind of from the Orsinium, Orsinium area. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We're going to select Running, which is something we're going to be doing a lot of, but it's also kind of in line with the original class design. Technically, it should be Jumping. Ah, technically, it should be Jumping. That just seems so useless, you know what I mean? But Acrobatics is like a skill that bards have in Morrowind and uh, I think maybe even Oblivion. Let's just do it. We're going to do jumping. Suboptimal characters. Let's go. All right. Lock picking. Um, something interesting about the, uh, the bard class in Oblivion and Morrowind is they're categorized as like the stealth out of the three archetypes of combat, magic, and stealth. They're called stealth characters, but they don't have sneak as a major skill. I guess it's because they use their guile and their wits to navigate the, the world, but yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. We're also going to omit stealth, stealth from our list in the spirit of that. Alright, let's go to our special advantages, where I'm going to have some wacky options here. Let's go to increased majory. We're going to use intelligence and spell points. Really not glamorous, but normally you have um, increased majory as like um, three times majory in spell points or um, your default value is just half of your intelligence and spell points. Um, besides being nice and middling and not overpowered, uh, it's actually worse than middling, but um, the bard default class has this advantage, so I'm like, hey, let's roll with it. Um, but I also want some... I'm going to kind of play this like the Atronach birth sign or the Sorcerer class, where we're going to turn on spell absorption. Uh, ooh, this is an interesting choice, but I'm going to do general. And we're going to gain, uh, let's see, darkness-powered majory, unable to use... Oh, that's not what I want. I want um, inability to regen spell points. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, any, okay, yeah, that should be it. Let's remove that. Okay, we're also going to have uh, expertise in long blade because I want to be able to hit things, if at all possible. And let's grab some more disadvantages. 
So I know that the base class for Bard cannot use tower shields. Let's do that. They cannot use plate armor. Let's go for it. I'm wondering, let's grab a phobia also. I think we're going to be afraid of undead. Uh, we speak the language of Daedra to some extent. We speak the language of humanoids. Animals are not that intimidating, but undead are otherworldly, and they send a chill up our spine. So let's do this. Now we're going to keep our max hit points per level where they are. So, um, well, for one, I like the difficulty dagger for leveling up to be a little bit down here. Uh, but also, this is where the bard's base class is. Let's edit our reputation. Um, I'm honestly not sure what to do here, but we're not going to be much of a thief, so... Let's drive the Underworld's reputation down a bit. Everybody should like us, though. That's the thing. Uh, let's see. Who's most important to like us? Doot, 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 doot. I think it's most important for us to be well-liked by the nobility. Scholars will be important for this character also, but we'll get into that um, if she sur survives long enough. So let's go ahead and exit this part. We're going to choose our career path by answering some questions. Which school of magic have you been studying the longest? That's going to have to be Restoration, my guy. I think it's technically Illusion, but um, oh well. What motivates you into a life of adventure? Oh, it's going to be knowledge for this little Lord Delving son of a gun. In between formal study, you spent your time... I think we're going to be socializing with aristocrats. Yep. Alright, since childhood, you have saved... Um, yeah, I have to choose the book if it gives me an option. And gratitude for services rendered. Uh, the Emperor gave you... To, can I get a book? A book. All right. As you grew older, you received additional magical training in... Where is Illusion? The School of Illusion. As a child, your nickname was... Oh, man, I really don't remember which one is which, but if bards are good at jumping... Oh, we gotta be a rabbit. You are friendlier than most with... Oh, yeah, we should get an extra little bonus with the Infernal Daedra. Of all disagreeable types, you have the most personal hatred for... Uh, how about immoral, <laughs> stupid peasants? Ah, that's... Personal hatred is taking that a bit too far. Let's just go with the moral assassins. You are intimate friends with a mage. What god, if any, do you worship? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, yeah, we're gonna go with Akatosh for this. Even though we are a scholar, I, I know that the temple of... Akatosh is called the Chantry of Akatosh, so like chanting and vocalizations is really important. I just think it's pretty cool thematically. I have no clue what that uh, faction offers to me in terms of services or skill requirements, but we'll figure it out. You have the most trouble with... Uh, this is kind of a hard decision to make. You have the most trouble with... I could choose... Like resisting magic is probably the most optimal choice here because we have spell absorption, so the resisting magic wouldn't really matter too much but I think we're going to say we have the most trouble with resisting poisons and we're just going to do our best to carry some poison stuff with us oh no um, I okay so that's all right I guess my reputation has dropped among commoners and has been raised with nobility I can deal with the Kirstia at Rakesen. Yeah, I got tired of making up names for myself. I really like that the random option is there because of how often I go through characters. All right, which face? Which one of you looks like a bard? Oh, she looks kind of dull. I don't think that's going to be her. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're a scald right there. Okay, we're going to distribute some points here. Oh, man. Yeah, let's bump up our endurance a little bit. I'm really shooting myself in the foot with the low endurance. Holy shit. Okay, uh, let's see. What else should we do? What else should we do? Strength is going to impact our carrying capacity. I don't really mind having... Um, oh, I know. Boom. Yeah, I don't really mind having the minus one to damage. I'm going to try to avoid combat whenever I can. And uh, we can improve it in other ways. Okay, so we're going to need to pump our dodging for survivability. Let's see. We're going to want to pump our... Oh gosh, long blade is 18. Pitiful. Yeah, let's pump our long blade so we can hit stuff. Um, let's see. And we want to... Be able to lockpick some things. Pacifying Daedra would be nice. Gonna play with very high reflexes. 
All right, Kirstia, let's see how we do. I'm just going to let this intro sequence roll for at least the uh, first character. 400 years after Tiber Septimus' reign, the beginning will meet the end, and the bloody circle will close at the Empire of Tamriel. The unworthy heirs of the Septim dynasty have allowed the bonds of the Empire to weaken and crack. Uriel Septim the Seventh cannot repair what his ancestors ignored. The provinces fight among themselves like neglected children, drunk with rebellion, and one indomitable power hides itself, but not forever. Excuse the gloom, but none may know of this meeting. The nature of my trouble is darker still. Over a year ago, King Lysandus of Daggerfall died honorably on the field of battle. He was as loyal a subject, ally, and friend as you are. I did grieve for him, but his spirit does not rest. With a spectral army, he haunts his former kingdom, crying for revenge. I do not know why a good and loyal man would be so cursed. Perhaps you can find the answer and close the marble jaws of oblivion, bringing peace to his soul. I ask this as your emperor and your friend. I have one lesser request. Several years ago, I wrote a letter to the queen of Daggerfall. It never arrived. The letter was of a sentimental and personal nature. If you find and destroy that letter, I will be grateful. Now, my champion, rest well this night, for tomorrow you sail for the kingdom of Daggerfall. Yeah. Did he say that he sent that letter like years ago? I um I guess I missed out on that detail because I don't watch the cinematic that often, but I really thought that the letter was a bit more recent than that. Let's go ahead and select to uh, be sent to a random dungeon. Yeah, I always thought that that um, opening cinematic was a little bit corny, but there is some charm to it. Okay, this is death date. It means I have a certain day when my character will die. It's like 50 years in the future or whatever, but okay. We're going to enable all of our warm ashes. We wake up and look around the room. Some hours ago, you were aboard a boat in Daggerfall when a storm of supernatural strength boiled over the Iliac Bay. Um, this isn't exactly accurate because I'm probably not in Privateer's Hold. Uh, but one way or another, we are stranded here. Perhaps there's a way out of this dungeon after all. Once free of the cave, you can begin the Emperor's Quest. Alrighty, here we are. Unleveled world activated. Um, choo -choo 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 -choo. Do you want to receive an early artifact quest? It's no. Is there all of that? Okay. Okay, uh. Let's see what our starting gear is like. Got a broadsword. Spell book. What's in our spell book? Candle. Okay. Uh, that's cute. Let's put on uh, some shoes and a cloak. That'll look nice. This looks like it might be a potion of healing. If that's true and I spawn next to a potion of healing and a fire, that would be fantastic. Uh, it's with an unknown liquid. Uh, I don't need to talk to it. Let's pick it up. Potion of healing. That's pretty sick okay uh, we're here by a fire you can tell that it's a fire in our map so i'm not going to mark it 
Search this, come to giant scorpion stinger. Don't think that'll be terribly useful. Let's light a candle and be all sneaky. Surreptitious with our light sources. Oh gosh. I'm not excited about finding out who I'm sharing this place with. Okay. This already looks like a bit of an... No, it doesn't. But I have this. Uh, if you have armor anywhere, you want it to be on your hands and your chest because that's the most likely spot that you'll be hit by an attack. Uh, that's identical to what I have. I don't think I should pick up much unnecessary loot, but we're also poor. Oh yeah, let's see what books we spawned with. Didn't we get some books from our... Oh, that's right. Okay, full disclosure. Yeah, it's not there. Yeah, so I died. I totally just, like, spawned in a dungeon that had a bunch of orcs and uh, saber-toothed tigers, and I could not outlast them. So I rebuilt the character, accidentally clicked on uh, fast start to skip the kind of inventory generation that you do so i don't have those books anymore it's kind of sad oh hello another orc that's not good oh you know i haven't tried pacifying yet it's not impressed by my orcish great uh, no not like this ah uh. Oh man, this is this is a little bit scary. We really, really want to find the exit and uh, come back here later, if at all possible. Go ahead and creep around the corner. You think it's counterintuitive to go downward? At a time like this. Oh, I heard a rat. That's good news. You think it's counterintuitive to go downward at a time like this because the entrance should be at the top of the dungeon, but I'm not exactly sure that's how it works. Steel katana. That's a bit better than what we're working with. Yeah. Oh, I don't really want both to be equipped though. Does this look any better? I'm not sure if I prefer that. Sounds like there might be some water nearby. Man, this candle has such a small radius. It's it's really... It's kind of nice, but... Uh, the first dungeon is definitely going to be one of the more terrifying experiences here. But, oh no. Oh no, thank you. That thing can paralyze me, and that would be just a game over condition. So we're going to run. We're going to run. Anyway, some mod creators recommend a mod that causes armor to do sort of damage reduction rather than acting like it currently does by default, which um, whereby armor reduces your chance to get hit. Uh, I kind of like the armor reducing your chance to get hit. I understand why you'd want armor to reduce the damage taken and not affect your hit chance, but I really want, um, I really want Daggerfall to resemble a first-person shooter version of... Uh, First person shooter is not a good term for it, I guess. But a first person version of Dungeons and Dragons as closely as possible. That mod also tweaks some of the ways that you resist spell effects by. Let's get out of here. Um, like, rather than resisting some effect by referring to your character's level, which is how it was done in Vanilla Daggerfall, and it's how it's done in. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, at least the old, or the older versions, which I prefer. Ah, I just did a little loop to loop. Anyway, that that mod makes things resemble original Dungeons and Dragons or older Dungeons and Dragons a little bit less, so I don't prefer it. Let's see if we can work with this rat to take down a bear. Be a pretty tall order. I don't think we've hit him a single time. Are there any other exits through here? Uh, if not, 
there are no other exits. We might need to go back toward the spider and bring him up here. Oh, hello. Yo, look at that jumping major skill coming into play. I guess it was a minor skill still. Look at that. Uh. Okay, we're already pretty low on stamina. That's pretty bad. Let's see. Uh, hey, it's chain gauntlets. Let's take it. Yeah. So if we get back to the starting area, we could rest a little bit. That would be good. Stamina should come back pretty quickly. Uh, that's down there toward the spider. We need to go back over here, and I think it's dead ahead. I think wrong. I'm glad I painted this on the map still. Alright. Yeah, let's go up here. Doesn't really matter much, but we're gonna close the door. Feel a little bit safer. Oh, you know, I should have grabbed the uh, rat meat to heal. Stealth, backstabbing. I'm gonna s stifle a yawn. Is that how you spell stifle? Pretty sure that's not how you spell stifle. It's the first time I'm noticing that, though. Okay, this candle is almost done. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go over here toss this candle, but I don't want it to be in the middle of combat whenever my light source goes out. Okay, let's get our lay of the land a little bit. I'm gonna mark this part as spider. We're gonna go over here, mark this as bear town. Okay. doesn't seem like either of those paths led out. Maybe the spider one did. We didn't explore it very well um, because they are terrifying whenever you don't have a potion of free action or some way to cure yourself of the paralysis. Uh, yo! -ho! Yo! What are we... Yeah, this is awesome. All right. We made it. Beautiful. Ah. Man. We're going to want another cloak. Let's put them on in the other order. This one's below. Formal cloak on top. She looks so emo with the little hood on. I wonder if it affects my warmth if I peel the hood back. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I just want to look around a little bit more. Goodness. This game is so beautiful. Alright, let's turn the hood back on. Moment of truth. You are in the Cavern of the Manx. It's 6.46 on Fredos, the 20th of Sun's Dusk. We are in Ephesus. Dude, that's cool. That's an actual place in Earth, and it's in Daggerfall. Let's take a look at where Ephesus is. Well, first, uh, it's freezing and raining fall evening in the mountains. Most adventurers know the dangers of traveling at night. We are well rested. Okay. Let's take it. Oh, we're... <laughs> wow, this is interesting. Ephesus is down here near the Dragon Tail Mountains. Um, there's a Temple of Mara nearby. Man, what am I gonna do? Um, do we go back in and rest until it's daytime and risk getting attacked by the bears and shit? Oh man. Um, what if we just put our campfire right here? What's a condition? The con condition is used. Okay. Let's see what time it is. Oh, it said 6 p.m. Man. For a while. 12 hours. We're gonna eat our one piece of rations probably before... before too long. We wake up. Ah! That lightning kind of scared me. Okay, let's do a quick save. Uh, because while I'm not going to be reloading saves, I still quick save left and right because I just... I don't want to fall through the map and things like that to kill me. Okay. Now the closest major settlement is Setenis, something like that. Um, but we really need to be moving toward Daggerfall because we are eventually going to be contacted by Lady Brissiana and we don't want to miss our date. Uh, how about we just move toward the roads? You know, 
we've already explored some of this, so it would be helpful to stay kind of close by. Okay, we're gonna camp out. Okay, the tricky thing about enemies nearing, being nearby is I can't, oh, hello. I cannot pack up my camp. There are enemies nearby. Oh, dude. I pacified him. How are you? Oh, he's a level one. Great. That's really cool. What is your name? Oh, I can name him? Uh, well, Jimbo. Do you have anything for sale? Oh, wow. Steel Claymore. That could be cool. Bard with the Claymore. I'm into it. How much gold do I even have? Um... 115. It's not great. How about we sell some of our stuff? Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Can I sell anything to you? Oh, yeah. Take a look at my wares. Okay, he doesn't want to buy the other wares that I have. Whatever. Do, do, do. Sell that. Maybe give him some excess torches. I have a little too many. Jimbo only has nine gold. Oh my gosh. No thanks, bro. Jimbo. Alright, forget about it, Jimbo. Thanks for your time. Can you help me sleep? Can you tuck me in and keep me safe in case, like, you know, bad guys show up? I actually do just want to hang out with Jimbo for a bit. Cold is seeping into our bones. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait out till uh, daytime. Uh, let's see. I think nine hours should do it. Okay. What was that? Uh, Jimbo. Jimbo, do you hear that? Oh, it's a wolf. It's an ice wolf. Shit, what is this? Jimbo, look out! Jimbo! Okay. I'm gonna trust that Jimbo is gonna figure this out while I rest. Sorry, Jimbo. They're still locked in Mortal Kombat. I wanna be able to at least pack up my stuff. This thing looks kinda scary. Oh, oh, oh. Jimbo, can you get its aggro again, please. Okay, nice knowing you, Jimbo. Yeah, I didn't feel good resting at a time like that. I just wish you were able to, like, pick up your camping supplies while enemies were nearby. I guess it makes sense that that act could take a bit longer, but, you know, you can put on all of your armor in the blink of an eye. If you could do that, then I don't understand why you can't also pick up your camping equipment real quick, so... I don't mind doing a little bit of um, immersion breaking shit like that if it means I get to keep my bedroll, because that's kind of expensive whenever you're at a low level. Would have been really nice to have killed that wolf so that we would have some uh, some meat to cook. It says I should be like right up on it. Oh wow, okay. Hey, we made it. Yeah, we're definitely gonna disable real grass. It's not worth the, uh, the little frame rate drop that we get whenever we come out of traveling. So this isn't really like a full-fledged town. It's more of a... Uh... Yeah, it's just a place of worship with some residences around it. Let's talk and see what people have to say. Local temples and regional. Oh man, there's not even a tavern here. Jeez Louise. Okay. Okay, I think I've given up on the concept of walking everywhere. I think I'll literally starve. 
before getting to the next village. And at least if we use the travel menu, we can abstract the 10 gold it takes, 10 gold a day it takes to travel as, uh, you know, paying villagers and farmers and stuff like that to eat at their house, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and go to the nearest large town. It's not even that large, but it's called Satenis. And we're going to travel there cautiously using inns. Okay, we made it. Let's disable the HUD, kind of walk around, get a lay of the land. I'd really like to do some low stakes questing to um, get a couple of levels, maybe a bit of loot so that we can buy potions, because we don't have any um, cure poison, cure disease, free action, or anything like that. You have a gem store, a general store, a local temple. What's your local temple? School of Julianos, not really interested. Hmm. Okay, at least if we go to the general store, we can uh, sell some stuff. We can buy some rations. And uh, that might help us survive a bit longer. Okay, uh, they're all relatively clustered together. Yeah, I'm thinking we can... Go back to the starting dungeon, and since there were plenty of animals there, uh, we should be able to uh, subsist off of them. The only really scary danger there is the spider. I saw one spider, that means that there are probably more. For the uninitiated, the spiders will paralyze you, or they have a chance to paralyze you. And I'm not really into the fad of picking up immunity to paralysis. Like, it just... It negates such a cool, dangerous part of the game, so... Um, I want that fear to be alive, basically. Uh, we still have a torch burning. Let's take care of that. The shop is laid out in a practical and straightforward manner. All the items seem to be of adequate construction. Okay, so we'll get some pretty average prices here. We're gonna go in and let's get rid of our extra swords, because this one... Uh, the katana is worn. And these are used. 1 to 13, 1 to 16. Yeah, I think I'd rather have... Even if it has 3 less maximum damage, I think I'd rather have one that has better quality or uh, durability. Uh, do, do, do. There is a mod out there that lets you change the uh, repair durability like you do in Elder Scrolls 3 and 4. I'm not sure that I like that mod personally. Like, I... Um, Whenever you start having items like Orcish, Ebony, or Daedric, the factor of needing to... Uh, let's see how much this costs. Fine, we'll buy some rations. Yeah, um, you have to really factor in the cost of repairing armor. Like, it's a, an actual uh, decision whenever you're spending thousands and thousands of gold to repair a piece of armor. I like that decision being there. Um, so while it makes sense to be able to repair your own armor and stuff, I, I really just prefer the economic um, nightmare that is having to uh, take your your stuff to a shop to be repaired. And I like that sometimes it'll take four to seven days or something to get your stuff repaired. It gives you reason to hunker down in an area for a while. Okay, let's turn on our torch and hope for the best. Okay. Now, I believe we came from, yeah, we came over here from the uh, south. Oh, okay, we've got a bear on us already. Let's just run over here until we find a uh, man. This could spell disaster, but we really need loot and experience, so. Oh, I hit one of them. Look at us go. Ow. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, yeah, get him, Sabretooth. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and get the Sabretooth. I'm not playing favorites, y'all. I want you both to die. I want to eat all of your innards. Oh! Damn. Alright. Glad we bought some rations. Oh, we're gonna be here for a while. Let's sip some coffee. We are healed. 
14 hours later, and I bet the, uh... Oh, shit! I bet the bear and tiger are still fighting, so I was gonna get at there. Okay, what do we need to level up? We got five points, that's pretty good. Endurance is at a solid 50. Um, let's see if we can... I guess speed... One point of luck couldn't hurt to get it to its um, next um, level of 10. Okay, uh, do, 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 do. I guess getting up to 50 strength wouldn't be a bad idea to, um, yeah. You realize that all your life you've been coasting along as if you were in a dream. Suddenly facing the trials of the last few days, you have come alive. I think these messages are from a mod by Cliffworms. Uh, I'm not sure if he sort of took the messages from Oblivion or only was inspired by them, but I think they're a nice touch. You stifle a yawn, the cold is seeping into your bones. Uh, our health increased a bit, so we're just going to rest a little bit more. Oh, goodness. We really need to improve that medical skill. Hey, look at that. Okay, we're going to pack up our things. We're going to light a torch. We are going to hope for the best. Now, I think with language skill overhaul, you have a chance to pacify. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're not impressed by my abilities here. Let's see if we can circle around before finding any new monsters. No, this is not circling. This is delving. Oh, a battle mage. Oh, I pacified the healer. That's awesome. Hey, buddy. What's going on? How are you? He has a, I wonder what he spent 10 magicka on. He's level 2. He has restoration, medical, and dodging. Okay, what is your name? Alabaster. Okay. Um, will you... Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Scoffs at me. Alabaster scoffed at me just because I wanted to sell him my cheap armor. Okay. It could be pretty cool to set up camp next to Alabaster. Oh, a successful bas backstab. Okay, Alabaster might just get killed by a saber tooth, of course. Come on, whiff. Alright, we got that one. Yeah. Let's try thrusting. It has a pretty high hit rate. Oh, dude, Alabaster, look out. I'm right here. Damn, Alabaster, he got one shot. Huh. Using that jumping skill, let's go. Huh. It's, it's actually kind of silly that that skill is being useful uh, outside of, you know, jumping over pits or jumping from roof to roof. Okay. We need to get behind. Actually, we need to just run away. Oh, Sabertooth Tiger just died. Let's go, rat. Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, hell yeah. We are, uh, we're actually making a tiny bit of a dent in here. Two gold pieces. That makes it all worth it. Uh, am I able to equip this, or is it plate? Ah, yeah. I don't think I can equip any of this. Okay, well, that's good loot regardless, uh, at least for our level. Uh, we're gonna get Big Tooth. This is more raw meat than what we really need, but it will still be good to have. We're gonna go ahead and uh, set up camp right here. Raw meat. Cook the raw meat. We're gonna go ahead and eat one of them. Let's mark this as our camp on our map. Uh, we should really rest before proceeding, because we are terrified. Stealth, backstabbing, and running increased. Let's do it. Let's cook a little bit more, also. Some more raw meat. Okay. Uh, small tooth. I'll take it. Man, I, I just... I can't believe that I just now realized that the slaughterfish sound is identical to the saber tooth sound. Am I mixing that up, or is that actually how it is? Okay, I can use a chain hauberk. Let's do it. Oh man, this is a pretty good find. I'm somewhat glad that the uh, the healer died. Chain hauberk, some boots, some greaves. All right, it's coming together. It's coming together. Formal aoderic. How does that look beneath our clothes? Uh, let's wear that as kind of formal attire. Oh, we have a ruby that we need to sell. I guess it was, um, you know, because I accidentally selected fast start instead of filling out all those questions. We ended up with a ruby, which is fine. 
whenever this character died in the first dungeon and I just recreated her. We started off with like three books, which is really great because we're a scald. We're like, um, this character's very interested in lore. And uh, we're hoping to collect a lot of books as we play, so it's a bit of a bummer, but we will just buy them the old fashioned way. Let's see if, yeah, our speed is reduced to 31. Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah, we're very close. Um, let's go ahead and right click, right click, right click. Let's see if doing this, okay, we freed up a little bit of our speed. Uh, I'm honestly not sure. Do I have to ditch the Elven Queerus? Like, it's 12 kilograms, and I doubt it's actually that useful, but man, I can't really, can't really get it rid of much else. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. Let's, um, pick our stuff back up. We're going to sprint very, very slowly back to the entrance, which is up here. Take a right, take a left, take a right, take a right, take a left, take a right. Yeah, I don't have a wagon, but for the sake of not being slowed down while carrying, um, let's just leave a loot pile. Uh, spell book, that's fine. I guess I should use my light spell every now and then. Uh, it's just... Uh, on the one hand, I don't regenerate spell points naturally. On the other, I don't have any other spells to cast right now, so it's not a big deal if I don't regenerate spell points. Like, I'll just end up buying potions of restore power. Probably, like, a huge abundance of them. Um, so it's not that big of a deal if I lose some some magicka. Okay. We're doing it live. Got a couple rats over here. It kind of makes me want to go hunt for some, like, uh, more powerful monsters. To uh, use the rats as sort of fodder while I fish for backstabs, but you know, let's. Um, it seems a little, a little cowardly even for this character. Okay, we're gonna grab some more teeth. Not very valuable, but we need every penny in their low weight. Okay. Oh, here's a fire. That's good. I really wish I could get the Darker Dungeons mod to work. I'm guessing there's a mod conflict um, somewhere in my list. Darker Dungeons is such a cool idea, um, but Climates and Calories and Darker Dungeons, like, they're made by the same person, but they refuse to work together because of some sort of mod that I have going on. Uh, I just need to sit down and go through and figure out which one's causing it. I'm going to mark this as a fire, and we might as well... Uh... Yeah eat the meat to get our stamina back a little bit more quickly. I need more rest, but that's okay. Do you hear any drafty doors? I don't think I hear any drafty doors. Okay, we came from that way. Let's go east. Approach these corners with all the due paranoia that we need as a level 2 character. What's our hit points go up to? Uh, 40. What was my starting HP? That seems a little high, to be honest. Not that I'm complaining. I'm not really sure what the math is behind that. Um, is there a buddy that I can pacify over here? Oh, I absorbed their spell. What's up? Uh, okay. Yeah, pacified one of them. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Healer just died. Was that my healer or the uh, one that hurt me? I can't tell. I think I'm backtracking, but I might just be going to a new corner of the dungeon. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm backtracking. Go back to my little checkpoint here. Uh, we're going to rest until we're fully healed. Should be... Oh, enemies... Oh shit! Oh my god. <laughs> Gosh. Jump scared. The grizzly bear is not impressed by our animal taming. Okay. Let's see how impressed with our animal taming the healer is whenever we kite the bear toward her. That should be cool. I was just um, dissing this kind of cowardly tactic a second ago, but whenever it comes to sheer survival, you gotta do what you gotta do. 
really like this character. I'd like her to live for a few levels. Okay, yeah, it's the hostile healer who lived. Soon the healer will be out of spell points. You'd think, anyway. Okay, the healer's dead. This is a nice room. It has some beds to rest in. It has some checks to uh, chests to pick. So I think I gotta take this grizzly bear further down into the dungeon and see what we can do. Anybody around here? Okay, we have a rat. Alright, come here, rat. It has a smaller collision, so it should be able to fit through this where the bear got a little bit stuck, I guess. Ah, oh, jeez. Come on, buddy. Pack the rat just for a second, please. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Trying to bait out one of its attacks. Swoop in. We've actually landed a few hits. I'm hoping our long blade increases a bit. We'll make the early levels a bit more doable. Hey, 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 we killed a grizzly bear. Alright, um... Yeah, we're gonna collect all these teeth. Why not? Big tooth, little tooth, I don't care. It's all the same to me. Okay. Healer had a loincloth, a steel staff, a formal aerodaric. This one's worth... They're both worth 100. That's not bad, honestly. Um, loincloth seems a little lewd for my taste for this character. Oh, we got a lantern and some oil. That's pretty cool. Steel wakizashi, silver staff, nymph hair. Um, do we want a cloak? I don't. Uh, robes. I mean, I don't think we want robes. Okay, let's see if we can use some dungeon loot here. Nothing of use. Uh, we have a yellow formal cloak. Do we have a second formal cloak? I guess this will help us um, survive the harsh temperatures. Uh, a wrap? Why not? We'll hold on to one of those. Play some um, Elder Scrolls fashion. Fashion scrolls. Uh, let's go ahead and eat another chunk of meat. Rest until healed. All right. Oh yeah, we failed to pick the lock. It'll tell you if you jam it, but I usually try to give it just like three attempts. Oh, okay, that was that was it. All we needed. Oh, I heard a spider just now. That's a little bit scary. Is this all moldy? Okay. I want to run back to the campfire and uh, cook this stuff. Stuff like this is why I kind of wanted to keep running as a minor skill. It's because I do a lot of backtracking to get back to my checkpoints. And, um, but you know, it wasn't in the cards. Bards are good at jumping. All the other Elder Scrolls say so, so that's what we're running with. Um, let's see, how do I get down there again? Looks like we go left, go right, and then we'll wrap around this little curve here. Uh, I love some Daggerfall dungeons. Now that we have a bit of control over what's going on here and we weren't just like going in blind like whenever we started this playthrough, uh, it feels nice to have your lay of the land. Now let's go ahead and... Am I too hungry? Okay. I thought maybe I was not hungry enough to eat one of those. Uh, not going down there. Not worth jumping into a pool of murky water. Sometimes there'll be a quest item down there, but... We don't even have a quest item. We're just out here living our best life. We've already gone this way. Let's take a look at our map while we drink some coffee. Do, 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 do. We've explored most of that area. Go straight. It looks like there's a door on the left that we missed. Is there a rat in here? I'm hearing a rat somewhere. Oh, this is great. We have some fur armor to wear. Um, 
yeah, it provides the same uh, the same durability or the same dodge chance as the chain hauberk. But since we're in a mountainous region, uh, it's a bit preferable to use the uh, the fur. It also just looks really good. You can't really see with the cloaks on and all of that, but uh, it's from Roleplay Realism. It's just a really nice addition to have these uh, more armor variety. There's something very special about the atmosphere of the dungeons in these games, especially like, I guess they're almost always dangerous, but whenever you're low level and just about everything wants to kill you. Oh, that really scared me. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a coffin that has like a a body fresh inside of it, and I really thought that was an enemy waiting for me. Let's see if we can tame the rat. Not impressed by my animal taming. Um, I think the Spriggan skill in Language Skills Overhaul was replaced by animal taming. Uh, so if you're wondering what that bit is about, that dialogue bit is about, it's, uh, what's going on here. I'm trying to pacify everything I can with my 70 personality or what have you. Okay, we got a bit more meat out of it. I think we're okay on food for now. Oh, this is sweet. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, oh, that's a heavy statue. We'll just stick with this bracelet, the bracelet pile of gold. I think I might have... Yeah, it's a bit awkward. Sometimes, whenever you interact with items like this using dungeon loot, um, it will spawn this loot pile. It always does, actually. I've never seen it make the furniture disappear. So we could probably grab something from this, like, skeletal decayed zombie thing. Uh, but it will almost guarantee that a zombie's gonna pop out and fight me. Uh... Okay, I can't interact with it. I'm just gonna try anyway. Yeah, these dungeons are all very... They're procedurally generated, right? So it's hard to really make a lot of sense of them from a narrative standpoint. But I do still think that there's some merit in trying, right? It's like the least we can do is treat this um, this weird hodgepodge of a dungeon as a writing prompt that, um, you know, our brain has to find some sort of meaning to it. Um, so in this case, we have a bunch of animals, a few healers, and uh, some... Now we've seen coffins full of skeletal remains. It makes you wonder what would have happened here previously. It's called the Cavern of Demonx. Um, in most cases, you can imagine that there's been some sort of rare artifact that people fought over. But with a place in a place like this, with um, so many humanoids, I mean uh, animal combatants, that doesn't exactly work. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get back to the entrance so I can drop off my my loot here. I'm gonna take a right. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm just gonna figure it out as I go. Sometimes it's hard to really plan your route that far ahead. If it's a cavern, though, then it kind of makes sense that just um, animals would show up here just to seek shelter. I don't think it needs much more um, fancy narrative trappings than that. Uh, let's see. If we go left, we're going to find ourselves in a large chamber. Okay, let's go straight. We're actually... Uh, I'm going to jinx it by saying this. I was going to say that we are uh, actually surviving pretty well, considering... Uh, I, I've, I haven't really played with this mod setup before where everything is um, unleveled with meaner monsters starting in a random dungeon. It's a really dangerous playstyle. I haven't done it before and so like it's, it's a little bit foolish to set off on this adventure for a let's play with all this enhanced difficulty. Um, but we're doing surprisingly well. Let's add more stuff to our loot pile here. Uh, do 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 do. What else can we get rid of? Yeah, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Okay. Now I remember there were some more monsters over here toward the south. We're gonna go back and rest before we uh, try to do any more of that. Yeah, I believe our campfire's down here. Yeah, what I'm really scared of is the 
um, spider, of course. I, I've mentioned it a thousand times already, but... Oh, shit. Oh, no. Dude. Okay, we gotta pack up and leave. That's all there is to it. And we have to hope that we don't die on the way back. Uh, I was just talking about how well we're doing and stuff, but in this place where we're fighting um, just a bunch of animals, it makes sense that we would contract the plague or some shit. Stomach rot, that sort of thing. Okay. How much loot can we take with us? I guess we're just going to want to take the valuable stuff. Um... What's our carry weight like? We're good, we're good. Man. This might be it for us already. Let's just see. I'm fairly confident that there is a temple back here. I'm scared of not having enough money to uh, pay for a healer if we go straight to this place to our right or to the east. 153, that's really not a lot of money. Let's go. Hey. Food is getting a bit ripe. I don't care. I'm alive. I'm alive. Okay, what's our health? We have brain fever. It is a slow death as your willpower, your health, even your personality trickle away day by day. You must either get a cure or face oblivion. Dude. Oblivion? That's crazy. That's the place that the... I'm trying to sh shut the marble jaws of oblivion even right now. That's crazy. What a coinky dink. Shouts for help sound nearby. It seems an escaped Atronach feeding off the sun's warm rays has lost control and is attacking townspeople. Will I try to stop it? Hell nah. The guards are going to have to take care of that one, bro. I need somebody to take care of me. I need someone to protect me. Are you, are you kidding? Oh. We might be in the clear. Okay, I doubt we have the money that this guy needs. Oh! Oh, this is great. Let's turn off HUD for a sec. Oh yeah, you can tell this is the School of Giuliano's. I think it is anyway, just because of all the alchemical uh, apparatus and such. Yeah, a new update was released for Finding My Religion not long ago. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. 239 gold. I did not have enough gold. Okay, okay. We have to find a way to sell some of this loot that we have on us. Uh, or else we will simply have to... turn to thievery, which is not something I had in mind for this character. Let's see what kind of... Ooh, let's see what kind of loot we have that we can sell. Oh man, and we don't have a pawn shop. I wonder if... or an alchemist. I wonder if one of these general stores is interested in this ruby. This ruby could be uh, what saves my life. Sometimes I wish there was like a barter system similar to what you see in Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, I guess the later titles as well. But basically, it'd be nice to be able to give this healer a ruby in exchange for healing. As the ruby is worth more than they're asking, even with like the um, cost reduction or inflation that comes with bartering. Hold on, let me pet this cat. Okay, I feel better. Let me pet this one also. I feel much better. I yeah, I'm renewed with strength now that I'm pet the cat. I think I've got a I think I'm gonna make it. Oh you know what? I believe there's a gem store in this town. They should be able to buy my bracelets also. The shop is better appointed than many. Its wares lie neatly on the shelves, although not good for a king. They are all skillfully crafted. You are a lifesaver. Um Dripping with sweat, pretending everything's okay, gonna come over here and sell all this. Gonna get 513 gold out of it. It's a pretty sweet deal, all things considered. Okay. You see, this is why we need a potion of teleport at almost all times, or some way to cast Mark and Recall. Uh, I took a big risk, even by traveling out of that dungeon whenever I had brain fever. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really preferred to just be able to warp back to safety in times like that. Of course, you could also just carry a potion of cure disease, cure poison, that sort of thing. Uh, but we are young, we are poor, and we are not in a big city of any sort that has all the services available to us. 
But I think we'll go back to our dungeon after this. We'll pick up the loot that we left at the front door, thanks to the magic of persistent dungeons. And then we'll travel and find a place that has an armory or a weapon store where I can sell that elven armor. Uh, then we'll see if we have enough money to get some emergency potions and such. Cure disease. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Drop a quick save, and we're out of here. Uh, so before going back out into the field, let's stop by a tavern and get a nice cold drink, because we, we had a brush with death. We should celebrate our mortality a little bit. It's one of my favorite songs. Good old leftovers. And let's have a, a stout. Mmm. Hits the spot. Okay. Going back to the cavern. Ah, keep forgetting that I'm carrying around food. It's putrid meat. Not just any old meat, this shit is putrid. Okay. Uh, let's cast... Ooh, candle. Oh, hello. What the hell? Why am I being attacked on all sides all of a sudden? I'm pretty frightened of the poison that these guys might have. And I don't think... You know, normally in a situation like this, I would try to... They're shooting me with arrows, right? I... But I can't make them run out of arrows. I don't think they actually keep arrows in their inventory, as far as I'm aware. Some of them don't even have bows. They're just they just have them somehow. Um, okay, we're gonna zig and zag as best as we can. Oh, I think I see the entrance over here. We might have a pretty good chance of pacifying them if we get up close. No, this is just... Oh, here's the entrance. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I would try to fight them, but I'm really scared that they have um, some sort of poison, so we're just not going to mess with it. Get the second formal cloak. Uh, chain pauldron. Steel wakizashi. No, we can't carry that. Okay, can't travel with enemies nearby. Let's just hit the ro hit the road. Hot footed out of here. Cannot travel with enemies nearby. Oh, I carried so much loot from the dungeon that I actually I'm, I'm taking a pretty big penalty to my speed. Uh, we really need to buy a horse, but this first obstacle of getting the thousand gold or like three thousand gold or however much it takes it's actually pretty substantial in the early game whenever you haven't found anything super great granted i have unleveled loot on so i could find a good weapon laying around or something like that it simply hasn't happened yet okay it's a little bit dark so let's light our candle here and we're gonna ask around see what kind of shops we can get to General stores, local temples, Temple of Kinnereth. Okay, this place is basically useless, so unfortunately we'll just have to go to the next one. A letter is pressed into your hand. You spin to see who gave it to you. You catch a glimpse of livery that vanishes into the crowd. There's something crunchy in the snow here. You search among the powder and find a crumpled map, still intact. It shows the way to the... Um, Asmeo Sena Cave in this region, you make sure to jot it down. Okay, um... So let's see... Let's see, Bard. I'm gonna call this Dungeons. Uh, what's this place called? Oh no, I guess it's marked in my notebook. Right, isn't it? Huh. Did I just lose it? The... Let's see. The Asme... Asmeo Sena Cave. The Asmeo Sena Cave. Ephesus. 
to keep track of the dungeons that we're aware of. Always good. All right. Oh dang, it's really frosty here now. Let's go ahead and I like wearing the other one on top if at all possible. Thank you. Okay, whatever. We'll fix that later. Oh, hey, buddy. It's a little cold out to be rocking your guns out like that, right? General stores? Okay, pawn shop. That's good. Thank you. They marked it on my map. Should be able to sell my ruby and... My goodness. I found another map in the snow. Ruins of Fister Palace. Uh, I won't make any jokes about that. Okay. Uh, doo -doo. Ruins of... Fister Palace. Feister. Let's call it Feister. Let's be mature about it. Okay. Oh, yeah, our letter. That was probably from... Uh, is this it? Okay. I'll probably be reading main quest stuff the first time I encounter them. If I have to reroll characters, um, I don't want to reread all of this, but let's see what they say. Dear Kirstia Erarkisen, I heard about your accident at sea and feared the worst. Now that I've heard you're alive and well, I would like the opportunity to meet with you and discuss our beloved Emperor's mission in the Iliac Bay. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lady Magnesson, the Emperor's agent in the court of Daggerfall. My position is not so official as an ambassador. None but other agents of the Emperor know of my true affiliation. The Iliac Bay is rife with rebels against the Imperial Throne, so your discretion is required. For the purpose of our meeting, I will take a room at an, at an inn, the Queen's Bird in East Fort of Daggerfall, for a month. After that, I will no longer be available. I will expect you as soon as possible. Well, that sucks. So, the one difficult part about the random starting dungeon is I'm way over here and she's way over here. So I'm going to basically need to stop what I'm doing to try to make it to her in time. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I chose this life. I didn't choose the thug life, the thug life chose me. Oh, hello. Uh, at least we have a few dungeons marked on our map, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do much of the main quest right now. We'll talk to Lady Magnesson so that we... Uh... Uh, sorry if you hear a mower outside. We'll talk to Lady Magnesson so that the we don't get locked out of the main quests, but after that we're just going to come back here and try to level up. Maybe not to this specific region, but we have so many maps here. We really just need to do some dungeon crawling. Okay, that looks promising. Oh, uh, he still won't buy- he won't buy our ruby? Oh, we already sold our ruby, what am I talking about? Uh, which Aoderic do I like more? I think I might like the gold one. Ah, oh, I don't care. 1,008 gold, all right. Uh, steel mail hauberk, steel longbow. I don't think that this guy is going to have anything of great interest to us. I also don't think I'll have enough for a horse, but man, it would be cool to have a horse. Let's, I don't think they had any alchemists, but let's check, yeah, no alchemists, okay. Yeah, I think our best bet here is just to go ahead and try to talk to Lady Magnesson. It's just going to be a lot of fast traveling. Uh, if we go recklessly, it will only cost 85 gold. Go to Sentinel. Let's do it. Okay, it's nighttime when we arrive. Do I still have my bedroll? Okay. I'm always scared I'm going to leave my bedroll somewhere. I don't think we'll have the climbing skill to get over this city wall. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I heard a little bit. Um, let's... Well, I try to put some light on, but it just goes into the city wall. I'm getting dizzy from the heat. Okay. I guess we're not in the mountains anymore. Okay, yeah. This isn't working. Let's just set up camp. What time is it anyway? Uh, you know what? We're just gonna loiter. It's five in the morning. Give it a couple hours. Okay. Beautiful Sentinel. It's one of my favorite areas. Uh, let's see. Do we want to stick around in Sentinel at all, or just 
leave. Uh, there's a couple of alchemists here. We should go hunt for some protection against our fail states. Uh, there might be a bookstore also, and even though we're not super rich, I really would like to have some reading material. It would just give some sort of comfort to my character here. Have um, something bound up in some uh, leather to read through. Do, 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 do. Sentinel Palace, beautiful place. Gotta love those polygons. Uh, this place also looks really great if you have the low poly trees mod enabled. You know, these 2D sprites just kind of follow you as you turn. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you use the mod that fleshes them out, it looks really cool. I've mentioned it before, but I don't use that for performance reasons while traveling over land, but uh, your computer might be able to handle it a bit better than mine. So I don't know if you, how familiar you are with the Sentinel region, but uh, or the, the city, I mean. All the towns basically are clumped down here in the southwest corner. There is one alchemy, uh, alchemy store that is just around this kind of... Uh, pool that's on the south side of the palace, so we're going to check out that. <laughs> Try to cut that corner, but still got my toes wet. You know, we're not going to be in combat for a while. We should really change into some different clothes here. Let's put on our Aoderic. Uh, do do do. Might want to buy some sandals or some better looking boots or something. Don't I have shoes? I must not have kept them. Oh well. Oh, I think I walked past the alchemist. Okay. Cure disease, cure... Oh, teleport, potion of seeking, potion of healing. This is all good. All three of these are good, but I need cure disease, cure poison reaction, but two potions of teleport. That's almost as good as those other things. Let's cure poison. Purification. I think purification is, uh, it's a full heal and cures you of disease, if I recall correctly. Ah, jeez. Okay, this is actually a pretty tough call. Let's see how much this would buy. Okay, 373 for a potion of cure poison. I think we are obligated to get that. 280 for a potion of teleport. We're gonna get potion of teleport for 280 over here as well, hopefully. Uh, 280. Okay, we have 383 gold. Uh, you know, I don't know if we'll have enough money to buy a cure disease potion and travel to Lady Magnesson. Um, so we're gonna go scope out the scene, see what it's like. walk along the roads, I guess. can't remember if these um, horses and buggies are part of the base game, or if they were included with, uh, like, a villager emerging classic or something like that, but they're a nice touch. Oh, look at him squeezing through this narrow little walkway. Right behind you, buddy. Yeah, so this is kind of like the commercial district here. Oh, man. Let's go into identify mode. Uh, wait, what's that word? Incub... The Emperor's incuna... Incunabula? I, I have no clue what that is. We're about to drop to the floor exhausted, so we might as well go find all oh, the taverns way down there. Thankfully, you don't just straight away die uh, if you run out of stamina. If you're in a town, as opposed to in the wilderness or in a dungeon, you will just die. Uh, so, not too harmful, but just for, you know, immersion's sake, we should not walk around like a zombie. Alright, Glojan, can you give me some gruel? How about some beer? Thank you. Um. 
Okay, we're gonna see if we can afford... Nah, cure disease is gonna be too expensive, I think. It's worth p poking our head in and seeing, but still. Uh, cure poison, potion of teleport, chameleon form. Purification, water walking, restore power. I almost, yeah, I don't want to break an enter with this character unless I really have to, but it's kind of tempting whenever you're this poor. Okay. I'm gonna go to, uh, first let's find out where Lady Magnesson is. We have the choice of two ports. I'm not sure if it's gonna make much of a difference, but let's, let's go look at our map and see where she ends up. She is at uh, Eastport. Let's go find where Eastport is in Daggerfall. Yeah, it's going to be a bit quicker just to go straight to Daggerfall. Uh, we really want to travel cautiously whenever we go to Daggerfall City. Maybe for that reason we skip going to Daggerfall and go to Westhead Moor. Because uh, we can travel recklessly, which will save us a ton of gold apparently. If you travel recklessly to the city of Daggerfall at low level, you're kind of likely to just get caught outside um, at night while there's a bunch of uh, ghouls and ghosts trying to wreak vengeance on you and shit. Okay, we get here. Um, after a journey across the Iliac Bay, a red-faced carrier startles you with a cry of, A uh, letter for Kirstia Erarkisen. Hey, that must be you. Here, take this. Gotta go. Other deliveries to be made. Um, I feel a year older. It looks like I, my birthday was recently. Happy birthday to us. Oh, man. <laughs> Lady Brissianus is on, a, on us again. I sent you a letter weeks ago. I only hope it caught up with you. Uh, if this one crosses your path after you have visited me on your way to see me in Eastport, please do not take offense. As I mentioned in the previous letter, I am the Emperor's agent in Daggerfall, and it is imperative that I speak with you. I have extended my stay at the Queen's Bird in Eastport for two more weeks. Of course, there is a possibility that you have intentionally snubbed me and shirked your duty to the Emperor. I hope that is not the case. If you fail to arrive, I will be forced to assume you are a traitor to His Imperial Majesty, Uriel Septim VII. Yours truly, Brissiana, uh Lady Magnesson. Well, shit, y'all. We have exactly two months to get there. Oh, nope, two weeks to get there. Eastport. That's kind of a far distance. Oh, now we can make it. Okay, she's going to be in one of these two taverns. Let's check the closer one first. Daggerfall in the winter is such a beautiful place. Is it? Queen's Bird, that should be it. Do, 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 do. Why, hello! Ah, thank you for responding to my letter, Kirstia. I am Lady Brissiana. Let me bring you up to date with the affairs. The specter of King Lysandus haunts the streets of Daggerfall at night. Trying to communicate with him is futile. He will occasionally moan the word vengeance, but that is the only coherent word I have ever heard him utter. If you are ever in Daggerfall, do not wander the city at night. You are certain to be attacked by, uh, to be attacked by his legion of ghosts. It would be probably more gainful to investigate those who might have wronged Lysandus to find the cause behind his torment. I do not know if the royal family of Daggerfall or another person or persons merit more suspicion. The major powers of the Bay, Sentinel, Wayrest, and Daggerfall may be good places to start. In the matter of the letter, the Emperor's agent says that he was unable to hand deliver it to the Queen because of the war. He hired a courier who supposedly delivered the letter in his stead. We do not even know the name of this courier. Obviously, there is little information to use, but it would be worthwhile to see whether the letter arrived at Castle Daggerfall after all. How you decide to do this is entirely your decision. I will contact you if any new information should surface. I am leaving Daggerfall soon. My position here has been compromised and my life is in danger. Do not mention my name in court. It is more likely to hurt than help. 
Good luck and watch your back, Kirstia. I wonder who sold her out. Do you think it was one of those couriers who, like, kind of flagged me down? Uh, hey, I wanted that space to be there. Let's see if we can control Z out of there. Alright, so we have, um, let's make it a bit here about the main quest. Ah, oh, dang it. Whatever. Main quest. We want to, um, talk to folks at Daggerfall Palace to, uh, learn about the, the fate of the Emperor. Emperor's letter. Uh, what else do we want to do? Investigate the three main powers. Personal goals. Let's write some of those down. We want to collect books, especially numerical chronicles. Uh, we want to buy a horse and wagon. We want to find magical items. Cool. Um, that's a good starting point. Okay. Uh, I think this is probably a good way to um, to end our first little video here. Might do some more recording afterward. We'll see. But um, yeah, let's go look at our history. Let's press F F five. I feel like we should be wearing a cloak with this. Uh, maybe? Is that too informal? Let's go look at our history. So if you aren't aware, Daggerfall kind of generates a history for you based on which class you're most similar to. So it'll tell you what your class features are. Here's our backstory according to the game. You can of course take or leave this depending on what you think works for your character. Your earliest memories are of a warm and unusual home. Your mother, a beautiful enchantress, would entertain you for hours with tricks. Your favorite was her playing hide-and-seek, though she was, though she always turned invisible. Your father was a fearsome man. Many in the village referred to him as that warlock. But to you, he was a loving and doting father. As you grew, it was soon apparent that you had unusually strong magical powers. <laughs> that seems like an overstatement, uh, since you were able to vanish from human eyes yourself. I can barely summon a candle, but whatever. Uh, I see what they're going for. Uh, you remember your parents talking about an evil battle mage, Yegar Tharn, how it was known in their circle that he had usurped the power of the land away from his rightful ruler. No one dared to move against him. If it weren't suicidal, you would have enjoyed working against him. One day in your 20th year, a courier arrived at your house with the news that a powerful hero had killed Yegar Thorn and restored the rightful emperor to the throne. Even your gruff father nearly wept with joy at the news. The courier also brought the news that there would be a great celebration in the Imperial City and that all the people who had worked secretly to depose Tharn were invited. Once the courier left, you asked your parents if you could go to the celebration. Your mother and father looked concerned and explained that there was not enough gold for all three of you to make the trip. Downcast, you tried to hide your disappointment. Your father, however, turned to you and said that it was time you made your own way in the world. He gave you a pearl and a very unusual staff and sent you on your way to the Imperial City and the, to the War of the Celebration. After many days of travel, you approach the capital of the realm, the Imperial City. You notice a small band of travelers only a short distance in front of you. As you are about to hail them, they were attacked by brigands who had been lying in wait in the woods along the road. You rushed to help the other travelers. As you approached, one of the brigands raised his short sword to strike you. In a natural reflex, you tried to deflect the blow with your staff that your father gave you. As the sword struck the staff, a great bolt of lightning erupted from it and both weapons shattered. The brigands and the travelers all stopped and stared at you. As the thunder subsided, the brigands ran back into the woods. You were mobbed by the travelers who thanked you profusely for saving them. Members of the Imperial family who had been visiting in the country and were returning to the Imperial city for their celebrations. Uh, they insisted that you come with them to, find, uh, to the palace and have an audience with the Emperor. The Emperor was very impressed by your bravery and knew your family as loyal supporters of the Empire. He presented you with a fine red ruby. The celebrations continued for weeks, and the Emperor often called on you for informal talks. When you were not an audience, you usually spent your time swimming in the murky black waters of the uh, Caledon River. 
One night you were called to the Emperor's presence in a manner such that you knew the business was serious. He met you in his study and there told you he had a favor to ask. Cue the uh, opening cutscene, live action style. Alright, um, I think these are pretty neat. You can always make up your own, but given how many characters die and get re-rolled, I like that they make it for me. Uh, it's a bit of a bummer that we're not rich enough to afford a book yet, but you know, that's just how things are in the Iliac Bay sometimes. Um, there's one more thing that we can read. This The game manual has a bit of lore about the major powers in the Iliac Bay. Uh, I think it's a nice introduction, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, so we've got the Daggerfall game manual right here. Let's take a look at the history section. It's kind of hard to read the font in some ways. Devouring time. Blunt thou the lion's paws, and make the earth devour her own sweet brood. Pluck the keen teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws, and burn the long-lived phoenix in her blood. Sonnet 30. I wonder if that's actually like a Shakespearean sonnet, or one that they wrote for this. In the second era of 896, a noble warrior king named Tiber Septim rose from the turmoil of the civil wars that consumed the continent of Tamriel and proclaimed himself emperor. Many opposed his claim and were crushed beneath his might like sputtering sparks of flame. The year after his conquest, when Septim was crowned first emperor of Tamriel, he declared also the beginning of a new era, the third era of Tamriel. But this is all ancient history to you. You were born in Third Era 375 during the reign of the 21st Emperor of the Tamri of Tamriel, Uriel Septim VII. The civilization that Tiber Septim forced onto the subjects of his empire has nearly fallen. The Elder Scrolls predicted, or as the Elder Scrolls predicted, the Bloody Wheel has nearly turned all the way back to anarchy. Some call it the whim of uh, Joffrey, the storyteller who crafts fate for his divine amusement. Others say, by the way, I wish we could have a like a temple around this character. I'm pretty sure this ends up being uh, interpreted as like a a sort of native patron god of wood elves or something like that. But it would be great if our bard could, you know, have this as a patron. Anyway, others say that the otherworldly heirs of Tiber allowed the vassal kings too much liberty or lacked their ancestors' military genius. A few took... Uh, a few looked at the character of the people of the arena of Tamriel and remarked that no one could create a lasting empire in such a place. Tiber must have had supernatural power, uh, supernatural aid to accomplish what he did. Such theorizing is best left to the scroll keepers of the Imperial City or the Sigics of the Isle of Arteum. Tamriel is what it is. The current emperor is no stranger to you. You have helped him in the past and know he considers you a loyal subject, perhaps even a friend. Trust is a hard prize to win from Uriel Septim. He trusted his last Imperial Battle Mage, the Power Mad Yagar Tharn, and it nearly destroyed him. His current Imperial Battle Mage, Okatoa First Hold, uh, Long of the Elder Council, has alone earned the position of the Emperor's Confidant and Chief Advisor. When the Emperor summoned you to his audience chamber, you were not surprised that he asked you to arrive after midnight. You were accustomed to seeing uh, the Emperor at unusual hours. Sometimes it seemed that to the Emperor you were an unusually crafted weapon to be drawn in secrecy, away from the inquisitive eyes of the official court. A trusted guard escorted you down the gilded marble halls of the Imperial Palace to the Emperor's audience chamber. Along the way you passed ancient tapestries and sculptures acquired by Tiber Septim or one of his equally avaricious descendants. Uriel Septim greeted you formally in utter darkness as Okato lit a single candle emanating the barest illumination. Just uh, not exactly how it came across in the cutscene, but whatever. This was to be an unusually surreptitious meeting, even for the cautious Uriel Septim. Please excuse the gloom. He began with a solemnity that you have never heard from him before. But mon none may know of our meeting. The nature of my trouble is darker still. Its subject is King Lysandus of Daggerfall, a man who died over a, a year ago honorably on the field of battle. Uh, you started to respond, but were silenced. It was peculiar of the Emperor not to allow you any questions or comments. He almost seemed to be afraid of too much inquiry into this uh, particular affair. Without pause, the Emperor continued. I'm, I'm not going to continue doing the voice, by the way. He was as great and as loyal a subject, ally, and friend to me as you are. I did grieve for him, but I now hear his spirit will not rest. It haunts his former kingdom, crying for revenge. I did not know why such a good and loyal man would be cursed, but perhaps you could find the reason. You could close the marble jaws of oblivion and put his soul to peace. I ask this of you as your emperor, and also as your friend. I have one other lesser request. 
um, air quotes around the lesser right there. Several years ago, I sent a letter to Lysandus Queen Minisera. She now informs me that she never received it. This message was of a sentimental and personal nature. If you would find the letter and destroy it, I would be most relieved. The letter is more important than that, you remember instinctively thinking. But again, you were not given leave to ask any questions. The Emperor's dismissal was friendly but absolute. Now, my champion, rest well tonight, for tomorrow you sail for the kingdom of Daggerfall. You packed lightly, for you understood the nature of the voyage ahead. The Emperor meant to send you on a small, anonymous sailing craft down the Urinthi River to the... What do they want me to do with these names? Uh, to the Bulse River, and from there across the Iliac Bay to Daggerfall. All three bodies of water, the Urinthi, the Bulse, and the Iliac Bay, were notoriously infested with pirates and any ostentatiously decorated craft would need to be conspicuously well defended. Man, why don't we have pirate NPCs and enemies in the game? I guess they have that one little ship in Oblivion, but alright, alright. I digress. Your voyage was uneventful, which made the weeks of travel to the Iliac Bay seem even longer. You still had a thousand questions about the meaning of your mission. How were you to exercise the spirit of King Los Andes? What was the significance of the Emperor's letter? And where that letter might where would that letter be? Recognizing the futility of uh, the ponderings were unanswerable thoughts, you concentrated instead on recalling all you knew of Daggerfall in the Iliac Bay area. You knew of the war that had claimed Lysandus, called the War of Betany. It was an uh, internecine... Is that how you say that? It was an internecine struggle between Kingdom of Daggerfall and the Kingdom of Sentinel. The battle was over a small but politically significant island at the western edge of the bay near the Ab Abessian Sea. At the final battle of the war, the bloody battle of Kringane Field, both kings were killed, and Sentinel, the king's widow, Akarithi, took the throne, regent until her children reached the majority. In Daggerfall, Lysandus was succeeded by his own son, Gothrid, but Daggerfall won the war and possession of the island of Betany. Gothrid's first act as king was to make official peace with Sentinel and to marry Princess Abagai of Sentinel as a bond. You did not know whether this union was, has proven wise. The third major power in the Iliac Bay besides Daggerfall and Sentinel is the Kingdom of Wayrest, ruled by the elderly King Edwire and his wife. She was the legendary former Queen of Mournhold, Baron Zaya. Both have children of nearly the same age from previous marriages, and though you did not know the particulars, you recall hearing rumors that there exists a dispute over the secession. It would certainly be worth your while to take a trip to Wayrest. It is said to be a kingdom of great treasures, where the merchant classes have made their lich- oh. Nope. <laughs> Where the merchant classes have made uh, their land rich by trade. Your ship sailed past the ancient stone walls of Wayrest, and the Bulse uh, widened into the brilliant expanse of the Iliac Bay. Your eyes lifted from the water to the sky. To the west, utter darkness. Clouds boiling with fierce intensity, uh, intensity obliterated the sun. You do did not know how soon the storm would arrive, and you considered sailing back to the protected harbor of Wayrest. But Wayrest docks were not cheap. The merchants could charge whatever they wished, travelers fleeing from pirates or traders. Anticlair was not far up the coast, and there were bound to be other small fishing villages where you could dock. It was hard to measure the distance to the storm. Perhaps it was out in the Abasian Sea and would soon dissipate before it crossed the bay. Unfortunately, the rain began a few miles west of the Owl of Balfiera. Soon it was so dark you could hardly see your boat, but you could feel it, grinding and cracking every time a wave struck its side. The water had darkened to a blackish violet. Your imagination was suddenly filled with fables of the monstrous creatures that lurked beneath the Iliac Bay. Weird tentacled beings, women with the bodies of eels, flesh-eating fish. He pushed some uh, such fantasies away and concentrated on the present danger. The rain came out of the darkness like an endless barrage of spears. The sound of it merged with the crashing of the waves, the splintering of your boat, and the high-pitched howl of the wind. You were becoming deaf as well as blind. You numbly steered the ship in the direction that you hoped was north. Your last thoughts were directed on an ink-black shape rising up ahead of you in the deep gray sky. Was it the side of a cliff or a darker fury of the storm? A blast of water rushed over the side of the ship, carrying you over. As you plunged into the dark and foaming bay, you saw your ship dive beneath the surface as if in imitation and something struck your head. You came very near to death, but by sheer willpower, you won the struggle against the vortex beneath the sea. The storm had intensified to an unnatural tempest, like a living thing at the command of a m maleficent master. 
With desperate, flailing hands, you gripped an outcropping of rock and slowly, painfully pulled yourself toward the cliff's edge. The waves crashed against the stone wall, cracking the very surface of the precipice. Stones jarred loose from the cliff and became deadly projectiles. As the entire cliff began to uh, slew into the sea, carrying you with it, you saw the small cavern opening. You fell into the shelter. Your eyes were adjusting to the cave's gloom when you heard the blast behind you. For a second, you panicked. You were buried alive. Then you saw the tunnel, your only way out. Um, so yeah, that's how the intro reads. If you end up in uh, Privateer's Hold, like most people, I'm not really sure what the um, how they would have put me in Eph Ephesus. I guess if we decided to um, seek a dock at Wayrest, we might have been abducted by some people and like taken southward and thrown into like a pit of animals, you know, Joseph of the Coat of Many Color style, something like that. Uh, I'm not too concerned about retconning that. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping this will be the rhythm for this bard character for as long as she lives. We'll adventure for a while, we'll then end up with a like a, a stout or an ale at an inn and read a book or something like that. Usually an in-game book, but those are costly and we're poor, and this one that came with um, the game is free. You know, I've got to mention, I, I'm just totally blown away by the reception that my first few videos have gathered. I uploaded that first video as a uh, about the dungeons as a uh, sort of just a message to put into the void, not expecting it to gain much traction. It was very poorly produced with um, minimal scripting, which I'm going to stick with. I don't have other things that I want to write that don't involve scripting, so doing it off the cuff is just the plan. Uh, but yeah, I didn't put too much thought into learning about recording or editing. I didn't learn about using my mic properly, things like that. Um, and yet those first couple of videos really, really blew up. And it was just really cool to watch um, as someone who uh, didn't expect much to come of those videos. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that this has to do with some uh, algorithm magic happening as Zarek Zacharon's playing Daggerfall as well. So perhaps I'm just riding his digital coattail. But it's so cool to be able to talk about my favorite game with such a wide variety of people. So uh, thanks everyone for coming by the channel for leaving comments, liking, and subscribing, all that cool stuff. Uh, you don't know what it means to me to be able to share my favorite hobby with um, you know, thousands of people on the internet all of a sudden. It's really cool, and uh, I hope we can continue engaging like this as the uh, time presses on. Thanks again, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next episode.